Hi everyone, this is YML and today we are going to talk about the Adversarial Discriminative Domain Adaptation Paper by Eric Zeng et al. from University of California, Berkeley, Stanford University and Boston University. This video is from the Paper Explain series and I hope that you will enjoy it. The main question that this paper tries to answer is that of finding a way of transferring the knowledge of a model from a source domain to a target domain. And what I mean by that is, let's say that you have like a source domain with some data and what you have here is basically the input data XS and your labels for this data YS. And you also have like a target domain, let's call it T. It also has some data. And again, the source domain is different from the target domain. And here you have only the input data XT. So you can try directly on both the source domain and the target domain because of the lack of label data for the target domain. So one nice solution would be to use the source data to train a model and then use the same model to get the labels YT for your target domain. However, I hope that you can imagine that this solution is quite naive because when you are using your model train on the source data to annotate the target data, your model won't recognize very well the patterns in the target domain because obviously it was trained on the source domain. So it will get like quite confused and as a result, the target labels that you would get would be of quite poor quality. The authors of this work propose a solution for this problem and as the title suggests they call it Adversarial Discriminative Domain Adaptation and now let's take a look at what they mean by it. So they begin by saying that we first apply a novel generalization framework for adversarial adaptation which subsumes recent state-of-the-art approaches as special cases and we use this generalized view to better relate the prior approaches. So basically this algorithm is based on adversarial adaptation or adversarial training to be more specific. And we propose a previously unexplored instance of our general framework which combines discriminative modeling, united weight sharing and again loss which we call Adversarial Discriminative Domain Adaptation, or ADA for short. And we'll see a little bit later what each of these terms means, because from my point of view, each of them plays a role in the overall algorithm. And they go on to say that we demonstrate the promise of our approach by exceeding state-of-the-art and supervised domain results on standard cross-domain digit classification tasks and a new difficult cross-modality object classification task. Okay, so they basically evaluate their algorithm on cross-domain or digit classification and also on cross-modality object classification. So far, so good. And here on the right, we have a more in-depth description of the algorithm. So we have our source data and our target data. And what we do with these two domains is to basically generate features in such a way that a discriminator D here, this is the domain discriminator, cannot distinguish between which samples came from the source domain and which samples came from the target domain. And what we would get after this training is hopefully some features from the source domain that are very similar with the features from the target domain. So if you put a classifier on them, it wouldn't have a hard time to generate labels. Then they go on to say in the introduction that deep convolutional networks when trained on large scale datasets can learn representation which are generally useful across a variety of tasks and visual domains. However, due to a phenomenon known as dataset bias or domain shift, the thing that we have talked about previously, Recognition models trained along with these representations on one large dataset do not generalize well to novel dataset and tasks. And we discuss again this at the beginning of the video. The typical solution is to further fine tune this model on task specific datasets. However, it is often prohibitively difficult and expensive to obtain enough label data to properly fine tune the large number of parameters in PyDeep multilayer networks. So what they say is that you have like some kind of initial data and a model trained on the data and you get new data from another domain and how we can use the previous model on this new domain. 
they say that the obvious solution is to fine tune the model on the new data but usually this new data comes without labels and because the process of labeling the new data is quite an expensive and difficult one you have to find another solution for this problem then the authors go on to talk more about adversarial domain adaptation methods in both the introduction and the related work. I won't go into too much details about this because then the video would be too long. However, I invite you to read them if you want to find out more. But keep in mind that they are a little bit outdated because the paper was written like five years ago. Despite all this, this could be a good introduction to adversarial adaptation methods if you are new to this domain. The next section goes on and introduces the problem of domain adaptation. So again, we have the input source images XS and their labels YS, which are drawn from the source domain distribution P of S X Y, as well as the target images XT, which are drawn from a target distribution P of T X Y. And as you can see, there are again, no label observation for the target domain. And the call of the problem, is to learn a target representation MT and the classifier CT that can correctly classify target images into one of the key categories at the test time, despite the lack of in-domain annotations. In domain adaptation, we first learn a source representation mapping MS together with the source classifier CS. And then the second step is to minimize the distance between the empirical source and target mapping distribution MS, XS and MT, XT. So when you basically use this classifier CS, it can be directly applied to the target representations, which eliminates the need to learn a separate target classifier. To learn the target features, we use a domain discriminator D, which tries to find out whether the input data is drawn from the source of the target domain. And as a result, they is optimized with a standard supervised loss L of adversarial D XS XT MS MT. And the equation is described here. This is a quite standard loss used usually for training generated adversarial networks. And we also usually directly optimize the source and target mappings according to a constrained adversarial objective. And this constrained adversarial objective varies across methods in the literature. So yeah, here we have basically the two losses that we use for adversarial domain adaptation. First of all, we have the loss of the discriminator, and then we have the loss for training the mappings. And the second loss also has some kind of constraints, which are evidentiated here. The next thing that the authors talk about is ways of implementing the source and the target mappings. And they start by saying that all methods initialize the target mapping parameters with the source, but different methods choose different constraints between the source and the target mappings. And the goal of this is to make sure that the target mapping is set as to minimize the distance between the source and the target domains under their respective mappings, while crucially also maintaining a target mapping that is category discriminative. Then they enumerated the uh, ways of constraining the two mappings and a very common form of constraint is to make each layer equal but they also say that it's also common to leave the layers unconstrained. Then they argue that by making the layer symmetric it might make the optimization poorly conditioned since the same network must handle images from both source and target domains. And as a result of this, an alternative approach is to learn an asymmetric transformation with only a subset of layers constrained, thus enforcing a partial alignment. When it comes to adversarial losses that you can use, they say that all the adversarial losses trained adversarial discriminator using the standard classification loss L adversarial D, previously stated in equation 2. However, they differ in the loss used to train the mapping L adversarial of M. One very popular method is to use the gradient reversal layer, which basically uses the opposite of the discriminator gradient or the mapping gradient. And this optimization corresponds to the true mean mass objected for generative adversarial networks. But using this method is quite problematic because during training, the discriminator converges quickly, causing the gradient to vanish. And thus, they split the optimization into two independent objectives. One is for the generator and the other one is for the discriminator, where the loss of the adversarial discriminator remains unchanged, but the loss of the adversarial mapping becomes 
this equation here. And they argued that this object has the same properties as the min-max loss, but it provides stronger gradients to the target mapping. So basically what happens, they use the gradients obtained by the discriminator when computing the labels for the target domain as the gradients for the loss of the adversarial mapping. And now after all this, we can go into more details about adversarial discriminative domain adaptation or ADA for short algorithm. So the first step is to pre-train on the source data. So what you do is to train a model to recognize your label YS using the input data XS. And here, of course, you have the source CNN, which mathematically corresponds with MS, the source mapping. And we also have the classifier for the source data, CS. In the second step of the ADA algorithm, we have three components. Firstly, the target mapping, whose role is to produce features from the target distribution. We have the source mapping, whose role is to produce the features from the source data. And it is dotted here because this one is fixed. So its weight doesn't modify during the training. And we also have the discriminator whose role is to distinguish between the features that come from the target distribution and the features that come from the source distribution. And what we want to achieve here is that by training adversarially the discriminator and the target CNN or the target mapping, we are trying to make target features that are very similar to the source features such that the discriminator cannot distinguish between these two. In the final step here, we have as input a target data and we are trying to produce the target labels YT. And how we achieve that is by using the target mapping MT or the target CNN in this case, because we are working with images and the source classifier CS. And why this works? Basically because on the second step, we have train MT to produce features that are similar with the features produced by the source mapping. So the classifier should have an easy time to label the target data. The authors evaluate the ADA algorithm on two benchmarks. The first one is the digit adaptation and the other one is cross-modality adaptation. For digit adaptation, we have three datasets, NIST, USPS, and SVA chain. And all of them contain images of digits, but they come from different domains. NIST contains handwritten digits. USPS contains digits from envelopes. And SVHN contains digits taken from the real world. For cross-modality adaptation, we have images of various pieces of furniture, but we have them in RGB format, which means that this is the real image, or in HHH format, which is basically the depth of that image. For digital adaptation, they perform three evaluations where they firstly consider the NIST as the source data and then the USPS as the target data, then the USPS as the source data and NIST as the target data, and finally the SVHN as the source data and NIST as the target data. The result of the other algorithm is aligned here, and as you can see, it obtains pretty much the best results on all these three experiments. The only exception being here, where it is beaten by the Kogian model. The results of the ADA algorithm on the cross-modality adaptation are described in the table above. And here the authors also display the performance on each label, apart from the overall performance here, mainly because the class distribution is quite imbalanced. And as you can see, the ADA algorithm improves the results on most of the labels in comparison with the model that was trained only on the source domain. And they also show us the results of a model trained only on the target domain. And you can see here that there is quite a big difference between the ADA algorithm and the results obtained by this method, which is understandable. So this was basically the ADA algorithm which was used to reduce the difference between the target features and the source features. I would personally take everything that was presented here with a grain of salt because this algorithm was introduced like five years ago and I'm quite sure that the state of the art has progressed since then. But anyway, from my point of view, this is one of the papers that paved the path towards new discoveries. Finally, I would like to thank you for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please leave a like if you did, subscribe to be up to date with the new content and until next time I hope that you have a wonderful time. Bye bye.